Acumatica's Manufacturing Edition. Acumatica's Manufacturing Edition is comprised of three key modules, Bill of Materials, MRP, and Production Management. These three modules consist of the features you are seeing here, and we will see some of these features in action during today's demonstration. Acumatica also offers optional modules for our Manufacturing Edition, including estimating for brand new manufactured items, a product configurator for items with custom options, and more coming in 2018, including advanced planning and scheduling, project manufacturing, and engineering change control. This process diagram highlights the end-to-end -end visibility that Acumatica Manufacturing Edition gives you across your production processes. Begin production from sales orders, work off single or multi-level bills of materials, apply labor and materials to production, and move finished goods to inventory in real time while generating reports and keeping a close eye on variances along the way. Acumatica users have dashboards that are specific to their role. Someone working on the shop floor or managing the production process would have a dashboard that looks something like this, where they can keep an eye on production and process, labor costs, machine costs, and a variety of other items that are of interest to them. There are also hundreds of reports available throughout the system. For example, if you were looking for a production summary or work in process, you could very easily run that associated report. To get us started, I've selected a stock item for a finished good, which is the printed circuit board. You can see that we do support several item types, including finished goods, component parts, and sub-assemblies. Acumatica Manufacturing Edition can help you to support automatic unit of measure conversions, for example, if you are purchasing in pallets and selling by the each. We do also support lot and serial numbers from cradle to grave as the production process is completed. Under my Manufacturing tab, I will see the default bill of materials that this finished good is linked to. We can also make decisions about replenishment options, including the source of the replenishment, the manufacturing lead time, as well as the required lot sizes and min-max order quantities. As I drill into the bill of materials for this item, we can start to evaluate the necessary steps and materials required to complete this production. Bills of material are integral to the production process. Configuring them correctly is key to calculating costs, time, and labor for your organization. Acumatica bill of materials can be warehouse specific, we can support multiple revisions of a bill of materials, and these are also going to be based on effective start and end dates. In the center of the screen, we see our routing steps or our operation numbers. Each one of these routing steps includes setup time for each work center. For example, how long does it take to clean the area or collect the materials that are required for that particular operation, as well as the run units and run time and the machine units and machine time. In other words, how many pieces are we producing per hour? You can also choose to back flush labor and materials within Acumatica, which will automatically create journal transactions for the associated labor and materials for your production, or you can choose to manually issue your labor and production to each one of the production orders. Each operation number or routing step is associated with a work center. These work centers can be tied to shifts, for example, regular hours versus overtime hours. They can be assigned to labor codes, for example, direct labor or administrative. And they can also be tied to machines. You can also choose to have your materials and labor back flushed automatically each time that this work center is used on a bill of materials. Back on our bill of materials, we can see that each operation number or routing step is tied to these four tabs at the bottom, materials, steps, tools, and overhead. For example, what materials are required to be utilized in this specific routing step or operation number? Well, we need our circuit board and our resistor to be gathered in order to complete the assembly. We can also communicate the steps that are required to the individuals on the shop floor. For example, place the resistors as shown on the drawing. You can attach files to your routing steps so that you can include pictures, maps, diagrams, and even videos. You can define tooling for each routing step at the bill of material level, and you can also dictate overhead. For example, if I drill into an overhead charge, I can see how these are defined. My administrative overhead uses fixed fees at a cost rate of four, while my floor space overhead uses variable by quantity, and my utilities uses variable by labor cost. 
These overhead charges can also be associated with the specific general ledger accounts and sub-accounts of your choice. To demonstrate this process of production, we will begin with a new sales order. I'll select a customer, and we will sell the item that we have been working with throughout our demonstration today, which is, of course, the printed circuit board. We'll select a quantity of five to be sold and produced. I'll save this sales order, and the system will recognize if any configurable items have been added to the lines. If so, the Configure button will become available, and you can then decide which options should go into the custom configuration. In this example, we are not using a custom configured item, so we can go to Actions, Create Production Orders. Acumatica will recognize any associated items that need to be produced, and we can create the associated production orders. We will now see the production number tied to the line, and if we have multiple items on the sales order, we will see a different production number for each item that needs to be produced. At this point, the production manager would get a notification on their dashboard that they have a new order to begin producing, but I can drill directly into the production order from this example. On the production order maintenance screen, we will see all of the information that has been carried over from our sales order. For example, under the general tab, we see the quantity that we are producing. Under the References tab, we see the sales order number that this has spawned from, as well as the specific line item that this has spawned from. We can also see that the source is coming from a bill of materials, and we remember that the specific bill of materials that this finished good is associated with is bill of materials ID number one. Under the Event History tab, we will see any transactions that are related to this production order. For example, material issues, labor transactions, and more will all begin to stack up under the Event History tab. The Totals tab will be extremely useful for keeping an eye on what was planned for costs versus what was actually spent, as well as the variance of the production. Next, I will release this production order, and we will see that the status has been changed from planned to released. Next, I'll examine my production details, which is essentially the bill of materials that we worked with earlier and assigned to this finished good. As someone on the shop floor, I can examine the different routing steps and operations that we will have to go through to complete this order, and I'll also have access to the different materials, steps, tools, and more that I need to do my job. Shop floor workers can generate a production ticket, which will show them each one of the operation numbers, the associated components needed for that operation, the specific instructions for each one of the steps, as well as any sub-assemblies that might be included. The order now begins to be produced, and you can choose to enter your labor and material transactions manually, or if you remember, we are back flushing this specific example, so what we will do is enter a move transaction. To move from one operation or routing step to the next, you complete a move transaction. You must complete a move of at least the last operation in order to complete a production order. You do not have to create a move transaction for each one of your routing steps or operation numbers unless this is required for your business. When you do a move transaction, the labor and materials are back flushed automatically, creating the transactions on our general ledger for us. I've selected the production number that we've been working on today, and as mentioned, I'll simply complete a move of the last operation and enter the quantity of finished goods to ensure that we have completed this specific production order. Next, I will take this off hold and release. When I drill back into my production order, because we have completed the move transactions, we see that the status has been changed to completed. We will also see the associated transactions for labor and materials that have been added to the event history tab. We can even see the batch numbers that are associated there and drill down if we need to. Lastly, the totals tab has kept track of what we actually spent versus any variance that had occurred throughout the production. At any time during this production, I could have returned back to the production details screen to see the status of each one of our routing steps. That way we would know what is in process versus what has actually been completed. I can also get this information from the work in process report that I alluded to earlier. I can check out my production summary at any time and we also have a work center dispatch available where you can select a specific work center and see what production is currently planned or in process within that work center. Acumatica also features a material requirements planning module. MRP looks at all demand from forecast and sales orders 
takes into account lead times, min-maxes, lot sizes for manufacturing purchased items, safety stocks, reorder points, and more. It also looks at the current supply coming in from actual purchase orders, already existing production orders, and master production schedules. Finally, MRP runs through the engine and lets you know what you need to take action on. Please see the separate video on material requirements planning to dive deeper into this module. Acumatica Manufacturing Edition gives manufacturers of all sizes an edge over their competition. Using cloud-based software, your employees will be able to more closely collaborate internally on production processes, as well as externally across the supply chain. Automate critical business functions and gain access to invaluable real-time analytics while seeing increased labor productivity and product quality on the shop floor. You can also extend Acumatica Manufacturing Edition to support barcoding and warehouse management. Thank you for joining me today for this high-level overview of the Acumatica Manufacturing Edition. For more information, please contact your local Acumatica reseller or reach out to us at info at